Welcome to Honestly Rated. Today we're going to be talking about your favorite candy barfing pinata, Pinata. This is our first sensei and villain of Honestly Rated, and my personal favorite villain, which I didn't pick. People in the comments put it down there, and I picked it. So if you want to see yours potentially next, just leave it in the comments, and maybe I'll, I'll decide I want to choose it. But let's see if they were able to make a pretty well-rounded character off of basically two moves and a character premise from villains. But first, let's talk about his history. Now, the way that Peñata became a Skylander in the first place is honestly more of a somber tale. So, obviously, Peñata was a villain. The reason he became a villain is that he had a unicorn that had a churro horn. And they was best friends with them. He would protect them with his giant sucker. You know, he already had those smashing capabilities with his big-ass lollipop. And one day, they went missing. And apparently, Peña does not want to think and just kind of act. And the Doom Raiders came up to him and said, Hey, you know those Skylander guys? Yeah, they did it. He believed them. You know, you went, you went to the telescope place. You fought them. You trapped them. And then Eon eventually just told him, like, Yo, we didn't do shit to that unicorn, but we'll help you if you help us. And Peñata just really wants to find that damn unicorn. So he joins up with the Skylanders and becomes a sensei, which I'm very happy for. I really like the guy. So there's his little history. There's his little background. And now we can go into his moveset because it is ten times more sweeter than that Sad's tail. First on the list, we got Lollipop Slam and Candy Barf, which these come straight out of Trap Team with a slight difference. I do want to say, though, that I'm not going to really try to put strength into the rating. Strength is obviously a good thing when it comes to a character. But since he is a sensei, uh, I don't want to make it fully about strength because he's going to be strong no matter what, right? Like, he is the newest one, technically, and would be strong otherwise. So I'm going to really try to preface it to how well they play and how well their moves are able to work together. So I just, I, just a quick disclaimer. But now actually into the moves. Lollipop is the one that works slightly differently than it worked back in Trap Team. Back then, you just slam the lollipop, that's it, bada bing, bada boom. They took a little bit more of a creative use to it, though, and gave them three different lollipops to slam. Or three different, I guess you wouldn't call a cane a lollipop, but three different things to slam. He has a standard rainbow lollipop from Trap Team that, when slammed, will do knockback to basic enemies. Nothing too big. Now, if we break the candy cane, it will do a freeze. And with our sucker right at the end, it will do like a bubblegum ground shit, which will stick enemies to it and cause them to be slower. And the big slam itself also does more damage. But other than that, those are the only differences between these two moves. Now, for candy barf, it's basically a one-on-one -on -one to what it was before. You used to barf at people, and it'll stun them. And it does the exact same thing here. It's a uh, pretty slow turning. You can stop it by jumping, and it works pretty well with this kit, you know, stun people, smack them, stun them, bada bing, bada boom. First two moves, pretty nice, and again, straight out of trap team, so can't hate it. The next two suites we're going to look into is Break It Down and Pinata Summon. Break It Down allows us to break our lollipops a lot faster, so comparatively to our eight hits that we needed to do before we could get a grand slam, we now only have to do five, and then on the six, we get to break our lollipop. This is pretty good for the fact that, again, the Grand Slam does more damage. And now we can get to cycle through our lollipops a lot faster and get those special advantages for, like, breaking away. Just like the gumdrop and the freezing and all that type of shit. After that sweet upgrade, we have Pinata Summon, which is his special move. And it is a pretty good special move. For right now, we can spawn one, and it's still pretty good at one. Pinata Summon allows us to summon a minion, which is a little Pinata. That does 60 damage, 100 damage at a crit at level 12, and works really well to kind of break away attention from you. Because people, like the enemies, actually do like to attack this minion for some reason. And if it gets hurt, it'll explode. If it gets up to its enemy, it'll explode. Maybe hump its leg a little bit. I don't know. It's like a really active dog that explodes. And it works really well. And the nice thing about it, too, is that this isn't one of these minions that, like, you spawn one and then if you try to spawn another, it'll explode just in its place. You can just keep spawning them. If the enemy doesn't, exp if it doesn't explode, you'll just have multiple on the ground. Now, I got up to, like, maybe three before, before, like, you know, one started exploding on, like, an enemy. But you can definitely spawn a couple, and they work really well. So, right now, it's it's all coming together. It's all coming together. 
The last two treats we have left are Pinata Ponzi and You Are What You Eat. These two aren't really even moves. They're just kind of upgrades to what we have. And they're really good upgrades, like very good. So Pinata Ponzi, as you see, is allowing us to spawn in three Pinatas. And like I said before, minions like to attack the minions. Uh, it really just helps kind of break away all the action from you, especially from large groups. And Pinata is a type of guy that I honestly think can kind of fight every single type of enemy for some reason. He can just attack big groups. He can attack, obviously, small people. I think that maybe the hardest he could have is against, like, bigger, tougher enemies that don't get knocked back from his stuff or doesn't get affected by it. But even then, Pinatas just kind of work. The Pinata minions just kind of work to deface them. And again, break away those bigger groups. So this upgrade in itself is really good. Just having three spawn in and you can spawn up to like six within pretty quick measure is really good. And for the last move in the primary path, you are what you eat, is creatively a pretty smart upgrade. Every time you get hit, you're going to drop candy. Or just when you get hit, you'll drop candy and you can eat it and get health back. That just makes sense. It's a pinata. What do you do to pinatas? You hit them and get candy. That's a pretty smart idea for a move, especially for a primary. You can have this for both paths. And it doesn't do all the health, right? It's not like a lot, but I feel like since you're getting the drop a good amount of times, it doesn't really matter that it doesn't heal a lot because you'll see it a bunch and it just kind of delays your death, which is always nice. So this last one, yeah, I like it. The Pinata Ponzi is a pretty good move too. It is really good actually. It's one that I thought you would see in a path itself but no it is one that you get for free and you get to use it for the other ones so yeah these last two this whole primary you know even though being kind of filled with just upgrades for certain things work really well we have shorter duration on our lollipop more pinatas getting health back per hit you know and pinata is not really a safe character he gets hit a good amount of times so yeah all these upgrades just ac like accumulate to just being good it's just, it's just, they're just good. On to our paths, we have Sweet and Smashy. We're gonna improve our smashing skills with Sour Sucker and Sugar Rush. Sour Sucker is a brand new candy that we're able to smash our way into, and it's a pretty good one. So it comes right after the Bubblegum one, which since we also have that other upgrade, which is also pretty good, we only have to do three hits until we get to smash our candy. So now we're going extremely fast. And with Sour Sucker, if you saw right there, was that we just do like an electric little you know and it shocks enemies it freezes them it kind of does what all the other ones do that is kind of a con if you want to look at it that way realistically even though everything is kind of unique in a sense they all kind of do the same thing they just freeze an enemy for an extended amount of time electrocution wise uh sticky floor wise or just freezing wise like they all just stop an enemy from doing anything so creatively is smart but there's not a lot of variation, right? There's not a lot of just differences. They're all just freezing. But it's still cool. I like to see it. And like I said before, our other upgrade where it lets us break it down a lot quicker is a lot quicker. We do three hits and then we get to smash into the next one. This really cycles through it. And I know I said I don't want like damage to be like the whole thing. This is helping to do a lot of damage. And even the next one. The next one is so absurd that I feel like they should have put it in the other path. So let's go talk about it. The last move in the top path is called Party Mode, and I'm actually seriously debating if this is probably better than the Soul Gem because it maybe possibly is because of the top path. So what this allows us to do is that every single time we break our lollipops together, it's going to give us a small duration of a boost of damage, defense, and speed. And if you remember our last upgrade, which allows us to break our candy in three hits. So one, two, three, and then boom, we get to explode. It's kind of fast, really fast. And you could tell that because even the fucking little disco ball on the top doesn't even have time to leave before I already have my next one up and ready to go. And even for its short duration, we are going so fast that that duration just lasts infinitely because we are smashing comp like over and over and over and over. There's usually a time where you don't have it on, right? And it, again, I don't want to like preface damage. It makes you do a lot of damage. And it's super good, but I definitely think it should have been in the bottom because it would have made the top feel at least, at least equal, right? When it comes to a Skylander, I definitely feel like that both paths should be equal in a sense to where you want to play as both. It gives a character a lot more depth and it gives a character 
a lot more of a feel of like, hey, I can go either path and I can have fun either or and it doesn't feel like I'm missing out on something too big. The problem lies with this move is that it makes the top path so good because it all works together very well to the point where I physically don't think you could actually want to go for the bottom path in any way. We'll go talk about the bottom path now and I'll probably mention what move I think they should have swapped this one for because they would have one made again the two tiers equally somewhat the same and feel like you don't miss out on much and you could just go both ways and have a lot of fun. But for now and since this is a reality we live in it's a very good move. Like, I, I'm not trying to say it's not. It is a very, very good move. And it makes the top path very, very good. And I definitely think you should pick it. But let's go down the bottom path. Because maybe, maybe you really don't care. Maybe you don't care about the extra damage. Maybe you don't care about being, a, like, an overpowered hype beast. And you want some more funner, creatively cool moves. Which I think the bottom path does actually do pretty well. Our bottom path is called Life of the Party. And this is for defense. Which, you know, the last one kind of fits. But we have Rock Candy and After Party. And these two are honestly kind of creative, and I really do like them. Just like the top path, we get to put our new candy in our cycle, which is this rock candy, which, if you got blue rock candy pinata, for one, I'm jealous of you. For two, you should definitely go with this path, because it just kind of fits. Uh, the rock candy, instead of freezing enemies, stuns them, which I guess is a type of freeze, but at least also adds something different, where it gives us a little defensive shield buff, and it takes away damage at times. So... You can at least give it that. And for the second upgrade, Afterlife, we get to create pinatas off of the dead corpse that we get to kill. So that rat right there I killed, pinata. Those chompies I killed, pinata. And it's pretty good. The only thing that I can say that is a very, 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 very minor of a discouragement is that it takes a little bit away from the move itself, you know, spawning three pinatas. But I found myself to still use it just because I kind of want three pinatas to come out at one time. So. It really doesn't take away that much. It's pretty good. Defensively, it doesn't kind of make sense. Like, like it sort of does, you know. It's a distraction, but also, like, it, it damages pretty well. Whatever. You know, he damages pretty well anyways. So it doesn't fucking matter. But it's still, these two, pretty good. But nowhere still, at, like, anywhere where the top one was. And our last one, the one that I think should have been switched with the top, would have been Candy Laser. Now, let me just explain why. For one, again, it would have at least created at least an equal domain of these both paths are pretty equal. I definitely think so. And it just makes fucking sense. You make a thing called party mode. You make a, a line, a, a path called life of the party. You make it so you can be more defensively good and speed and damage. Doesn't that all just accumulate to what the bottom path has? I know it probably wouldn't do as well as the top, but at least then both sides feel equal. But let's actually talk about the move, right? You're here for the fucking other move, not for me ranting. So Candy Laser is a very, for one, not defensive move. For two, very cool move. It allows us to hold down our barf button and shoot out a, a cannon of one candy or a giant Twizzler from at least that angle. And it's pretty cool. But not as cool as the top path. And again, I, I, I'm sorry I keep prefacing this, but it, it really does kind of lead into what I'm going to have to say at the end. It's just like, it's just not as good. It is, like, it is the one move also that I think has recoil for using it at the wrong time. For most moves, you can kind of jump out of it and just kind of stop midway. This is one that you commit to. And that doesn't really work defensively. This fits more with the fighting path, you know, the path that does like damage and shit. Whatever. It's cool. It's a cool move. And I definitely say Pinata's move so far, from all of it that we've seen, fits pretty well with them. I like it. It's cool. It's pretty epic, but just not. It's just, it's just the bottom path. Justice for the bottom path. You know, justice for the bottom path. Last up for the Soul Gem, we have Everybody Dance Now, which I don't know if it's a threat or more of like an invitation, but it's a cool move. You start doing the little dance, a little samba, with your maracas and the fucking mariachi hat, and uh, you start, you just go you go to town. You go to town. It's a gamble though. Uh, it's just it's more of like a random. Wherever the pinatas drop, they drop and they explode. Wow! Who knew this many pinatas have that many bombs in it? It's a cool move. I I, I find it cool, but it's not really that good. I I definitely think like. The laser beam would have been a better just soul gem. Again, even even the other one too would have been a nice soul gem. 
this one's just kind of like I could see this just in like a path. Eh, it's what it's whatever. Maybe it's just because Pinata has so many things that just look like Soul Gems. This one just isn't like as crazy because of it. So, well, whatever. And the last thing, Sky Chi Power Party of One. Um, it's it, it's a Sky Chi. I'm not really gonna put it in there, but I feel like maybe someone would have said something. So we'll put it in here. He just spews out a bunch of lollipops. All the lollipops you got, every single one, even the rock candy and sour one. And it does a lot of damage. Pretty short, pretty cool, fits them. All right. Well, uh, we'll go on to the rating now. So after busting open this pinata and taking a look at every single thing he got inside, what is my final rating for him? Well, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 5. I like everything he does. I like his moves. I like everything, you know. But the problem is, I personally just feel like the top heaviness of his path is something that doesn't really warrant him a 5, you know. And I do also feel like it would be kind of weird for me to give a character that I like a lot a 5. I feel like a 4... Is there if maybe maybe even like a 4.5 you know somewhere around there I just don't think he's perfect uh, I think his bottom path is just if they maybe he could have been a five if they switched those two honestly if they just if they switch the candy barf and they switch like the powerful like disco one I think honestly could have been a five just because I think I think both sides would have had something nice and something to enjoy and that stupid fucking disco ball wouldn't be dropping every two to five seconds of using it, you know? But for now, he's a four. Even a 4.5 if you want me to be a little bit more lenient to a guy I like. But that's all I got. If you guys enjoyed, subscribe. Tell me again who you want to see next. There's a playlist of everything so one I've done before. Maybe I'll redo some just because, you know, I suck then. I at least got the method down now. But... Who knows? We'll see. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. And again, subscribe if you want to, but you don't have to. So, yeah. Peace.